my most memorable studio moments. It's kind of funny because my studio always been in my house. It's always been in my bedroom, you know what I'm saying? So it, it ain't really been nothing crazy, but I mean, the first time when I ever started recording when I was younger, yeah, I'd be up recording like at three in the morning and my mom would be sitting there on the side in the house, like, and it would be dark. I'd be recording in the dark because I didn't want to be loud, but I was like recording right next to my mom's room. And she would be sitting, peeping around the corner, just watching me record. And I would look, I'd be scared as hell, and it'd be my mom right there. But that's when I knew she like, she really like, you know what I'm saying, messed with my music. When I was young, she never stopped me from recording. She let me record my entire life. It didn't matter how loud I was, I'd be screaming or whatever. My mom would still let me record. But yeah, that that's like the most memorable moment for me was let my mom let me do my music in the house and be loud as hell, even though I had school the next day. But I recorded most of my hits in my room. Like all my big songs, I recorded in my room. Some of the gears that I record with, I just got a microphone, the little inbox, and a computer. Nothing special, nothing special. Everybody, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people think that you need all this crazy stuff. Nah. When I record my music, I use Pro Tools, a microphone, an interface, and just a laptop. Pro Tools for life. I'll never use Logic, ever. Uh, I didn't know Nasty Freestyle was gonna be big at all. I just made it just to, I wanted to start taking my career serious and get on the music too. I didn't have no music. I was sitting on my ass trying to figure out how I was doing. I was kind of stressing. I was like, dang, what's the next play I gotta make? And I couldn't figure it out. I was pushing another song, but it wasn't going nowhere. I was spending money on the song. It was getting zero views. So I had Nasty Freestyle out for like a whole month before it even blew up. It was just sitting on YouTube, it had like a thousand views. And then one day I randomly decided to make a dance video to it and it just took off like a rocket. And after that day, it changed my life. Oh, my family keeps me motivated when I see that so many people count on me and I see my mom still, my mom working a job, you know what I'm saying? My brother's working a job because I don't want my mom to work anymore. It keeps me pushing. Everything keeps me pushing when I see like my homeboys, you know what I'm saying? They help me push. Everybody around me keep me motivated. It made me want to strive harder in it so I could make sure everybody taken care of. The first time it was like, I was trying too hard. And then I was listening to everybody else's opinion and doing what they wanted to do. And this album I just had fun with and did me, you know what I'm saying? That's what make it day way, way different. Of course that's natural, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that was his time, you know what I mean? RP once again. But on us, it was like, man, is it us? I felt like, you know what I'm saying? I almost felt guilty. Like, is it us? What's wrong with us? Potentially, if we would have went to this fucking party, her, not to say he would have gotten a situation, but we could have been at risk, as well as Willie Colley-Stein, which was the fucking leading center for the University of Kentucky basketball team and some, a couple other people. So that's kind of a wild story, and we dodged the bullet. Dr. Dre means like everything. He's like one of the greatest to ever do it. He got the best ear. To me, it was more so like trying to walk in those, like I don't want to be Dr. Dre, but I want to be up there with him. Like I want to be named in the list of legends, like he's in that list.